Hello, it's James and welcome to our fifth Risk OSC programming tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you to use um, more parts of the C language. And um, I'm going to show you how to make some tools to make Risk programming just a little bit easier um, or quicker. So do you remember when I said we needed to compile things? The first step was to go into the task manager, change the size of the, the next slot, then open a new task window and then change it back. And it was all a bit fiddly in order to avoid this message. If I just put GCC and you see it says insignificant, insufficient memory, sorry. So um, wouldn't it be easier if we just had a button that would do that for us? Um, luckily we can do that. If I, I've got strong ED open now, and if I go up and I go into base modes, you'll see I can make a file which is of file type at bay. So that's like a .bat file on Windows. Um, it's just something that the um, command line will understand. And it's going to be a really simple file. It starts with this task window, because we're going to open a new task window. Then in speech marks, we put what we want, um, well, the command we wanted to run. And we're just going to write a little message, echo G, um, GCC terminal. Now we want to set how much memory it's going to have. So if we have dash wimp slot, we can define how much memory is needed. Um, that will be enough. That's uh, 16,000 K. That's about as much as I, um, 60,500 K as I would normally allocate it. And then dash name. Here we can set the name for the title. We're going to put GCC. Lovely. Now let's find a place to save that. I'm going to save it in my programming folder. Um, and I'm going to call it GCC terminal. Lovely. Stick it in there. And now um, if I open this, it says GCC terminal, and if I type GCC, um, it says no input files. Um, so it's got enough memory. It's not giving me the insu um, sufficient memory error. Now, if I drag that onto my desktop, um, it puts it on something called the pin board. Um, and if I hit save, every time I turn the computer on in the top corner, I will have my uh, terminal. Hello. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is some new parts of the C language. So um, let's get a new C file open. Um, OK, so our normal demo file will have hashtag include um, standard io.h. Lovely. So um, int main. Now, everything I'm going to be showing you today is going to be to do with um, pointers. So, turn zero. Lovely. So, the first thing I'm going to show you is a new way of thinking about functions. So, um, say I had, say I had a program which um, I give it a number, and it's going to give me that number times by two, and that number with two added to it. Um, and I'm going to have a function that times it by two and a function that adds two to it because I'm going to use those over and over again. Um, I'd write that something like this. So I'd need int number. That's the number that I'm going to add two to and times times it by two. Um, and here I'm going to have a function int add two. That's going to take an integer in and it's going to return i plus two two and I'm going to have another function int molt two and that's going to take an integer and that's going to return i times two lovely then all I need to do is I need to set my number I'll go um, number equals five then I'll go um, I'll define two, oh, I'll go x int x equals um, add two number int y equals molt two number. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out on the screen using printf. I'm going to go number equals, and I'll put an integer placeholder. Uh, x equals another integer placeholder and y equals an integer placeholder. Let's fill those placeholders with number x and y. 
So what I'm expecting is when I run this software, I'm defining a number, setting it equal to 5, and then I'm going to make x 7, 5 plus 2, and then I'm going to make y 10, 5 times 2, and then I'm going to print out number equals 5, x equals uh, 7, y equals 10. That's my prediction. So let's, let's get a place to save this. Um, I'm going to save it here. Uh, I don't need this anymore. Brilliant. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this test, saving it in a C folder. Lovely. Now I'm going to set this directory, open my terminal app, and I'm going to write um, gcc test.c. Lovely. And let's see if I've spelled this all right, made no mistakes. Lovely. So if I run this, it says number equals 5, x equals 7, y equals 10. Exactly what I predicted. Lovely. So could I not combine both of these functions into just one mega function? Well, at the moment I can't because I only know how to return one value. But if I can make a function that could return two values, then um, my life would be a bit easier. And um, I'm going to show you how to do that using pointers. So instead of just passing inputs, we can pass the address of an output. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to make a new function, and it's going to be of type void, and it's going to be called um, mega function. And that's going to take integer i. Then it's going to have two more inputs, which are pointers. So it's going to have int, and it's a pointer to output 1 and int and it's a pointer to output 2 and I'm going to make this do what the other two functions did so first of all the value at output 1 is going to equal i plus 2 oh it's not a semicolon and the value at output 2 is going to equal I times 2. Now, how do I use this function? Well, it's quite simple. First of all, I'm going to move these x and y declarations. I'm just going to save some space and put them here so I can define multiple integers on one line, x and y. So I'm defining an, an integer called number, an integer called x, and an integer called y. I'm setting number equal to 5. And now I'm going to use my mega function, mega function. I'm going to pass it number, just like last time, but then I'm going to pass it the address of x and the address, um, where's it gone? There we go, <laughs> of y. So I'm passing the address of x, so output 1 equals the address of x. I'm going to go to the value at the address of output 1, which is x, and set that equal to i plus 2. Then I'm passing the address of y as output 2. We're going to go to the value at output 2, which is the value of y, and set that equal to i times 2. So it's a way of having two outputs, um, or three or four, or as many as you like, um, to one function. So I can remove these now because I'm not using them. Um, so look, that's a lot smaller already. And if I've typed that all out right, then hopefully if I go gcc test.c, it will have... Um, it will work in exactly the same way. We're expecting exactly the same output. Here we go. There we go. Number equals 5, x equals 7, and y equals 10. Right. Next thing we're going to look at is um, making a sort of a function that initializes a struct by taking the struct as a pointer input and um, changing the members. So let's make a struct first. So I'm going to make a struct called number and it's going to have three members x oh integer x y and z now down here i'm going to make struct number and i'm going to call it num brilliant now i'm going to go num dot x equals oh look i've made that x y num x equals five and then i'm going to change this mega function i'm going to change this mega function so it takes one input 
that is going to be struct number and it's going to be a pointer called in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say oh, in and now I'm going to use this arrow operator which I'll explain in a sec y equals um, in x plus 2 then in z equals x times 2. That's what I'm going to do. And let me explain what this is. Now, because struct number in is a pointer, I need to dereference that pointer. But I don't want to dereference the member as well. Um, so what I'd have to do is I'd have to put in brackets, dereference the pointer that way, and then go dot. Now that's really messy, um, especially if one of the members is another pointer to another struct, because then I'd end up with member and so on and dot. And say it's a pointer to a pointer, which we'll get to maybe, then it'd be, and it's messy. So instead of that, They've got an arrow operator, which is exactly the same. So this first line in arrow y is exactly the same as in dot y, exactly the same. Um, so this is going to initialize our function. And if I go change this, I'm going to pass the um, I'm going to pass the address of the function. Um, Oh, sorry, of the struct num. There we go. And now I'm just going to change this to num.x, num.y, and num.z. So hopefully this will give us exactly the same output as last time. Oh, what have I forgotten? Line seven. Ah, yes, I forgot my semicolon at the end of the struct. Don't forget them. Let's try again. Right then. Brilliant. Exactly the same output, exactly what you wanted. Lovely. Now then. The last thing I'm going to show you is um, memory allocation. So we're going to include a new library, include standard library, std lib.h. And um, we're going to be using two functions from this. And the first is malloc, and the next one is free. So what malloc does is we put in brackets how much memory we need. So that could be 12 bytes, that could be 100 bytes. And um, what that does is that returns, it creates that many bytes of space on the heap, which is a, another place we can store variables in memory. And it returns the address of that space um, to a pointer. So we could have int pointer p equals malloc and then 12, which would return 12 bytes for our integer pointer p. Um, we can be a bit more accurate than that though. We could go, so you wanted to store in P the size of 12 integers. We could go size of um, int times by 12. And size of will return the size of whatever type we have in brackets. And it can be structs that you've made. I could put struct number um, in there to get the size of our struct here. Um, so yeah, that's what malloc does. And finally, free. We're hogging that memory at the moment. There are other, you know, the the heap is memory that all of the programs have access to. But um, we could be hogging it. We might not need what we've allocated anymore. So we put free, and we put the pointer in there, which like that. Um, lovely. So. 
I'll show you when we need to use it. So if I'm going to change my struct to a pointer, the next thing I need to do is allocate memory to it. So I'm going to go num equals malloc or memory allocation. That's what it stands for. And then we go size of go struct number. Lovely. Then because num is a pointer, I now need to change all of these to arrows. And now you'll notice that this is the address of a pointer, which is the address of a struct, which is on the heap. So really, this should be a double pointer, shouldn't it? Because it's a pointer to a pointer to a struct number. So how are we going to notate that? Well, do you remember I said that that is exactly the same as that? What we're going to do is we're actually going to put that syntax around our ins. So you'll see now why. Um, see why we use the arrow operator. Um, oh, dear. There we go. So I'm going to change to that. And the reason why you can see now why we use the arrow operator because that looks way neater than that. So it. You don't want to do nested brackets of pointer operators, but there we go. We're dereferencing the first pointer, then we're using the arrow operator to dereference the second pointer to get Y. So hopefully that's all going to work. Hopefully I've made no mistakes. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Brilliant. Test it all out. Okay, exactly what we want. And um, I, I'm going to go a step further, actually. I'm going to make a new global variable called count. And in my main function, the first thing I'm going to do before I before I declare my pointer to number, I'm going to go count equals naught. Then what I'm going to do is inside my initializer function uh, called mega function, I'm going to go in x equals count and then just to make this all a bit neater I'm going to change that to count then at the end, bottom of that I'm going to go count plus plus which is the same as going count equals count plus one so now each time I initialize um, one of these functions each time I initialize one of my structs, um, it's going to initialize it with x equaling zero. Then the second time it will have added one, so it's going to have count equaling to one and two and three. Um, so we're going to do just that star num two and star num three. Don't forget that. And we're going to do, uh, in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to take that away. And we're going to stick that here. We're going to allocate it here, change that to in, so we don't need to write malloc out three times. Don't forget this malloc out one. And I'll explain this all afterwards, just in case I'm going a bit too quickly. So now we're going to use our take all that out. We're going to use our mega function. Um, copy and paste that. There we go, there we go. Number two, number three. And finally, we're going to use this print function. In fact, just before that, new line. So copy that, paste it, paste it. Add the semicolons, get rid of that. Change that to Num two, num three, two, num three, num two, num three. So what this is going to do is we set count equal to zero. We create three um, ver three pointers that are of type number, which is a struct we defined here, which is just three variables. Then we're going to use our mega function to initialize all three of them. So in here, 
um, the struct we pass into it, uh, or the pointer to the pointer to the struct we pass into it, it dereferences it just to get to the original pointer, then allocates enough size for it. It then goes and um, sets the first one um, to count. It sets y equals count plus two and z equals count times two. And it adds one to count. So the second one counts now equal to one. So it's going to set x equal to one, y equal to three, and z equal to um, two. Then we're going to add one again. So x is equal to two, y is equal to um, four, and z is equal to four as well. Um, we don't have any more, so it's just going to be those two, and then it's going to print them all out on the screen. Um, brilliant. And finally, just before I run it, I talked about the free run function, and I'm going to use it now. Num free num two. You'll notice I'm not using a new line character, and that's because in C you just spaces and new lines don't matter. Um, that's why there's the semicolon. You don't need a new line. So because I'm just freeing three variables, I thought I'd do it all in the one line just to make it look a bit neater. So if I save that, I go here gcc test C. Let's see if it's what we expected. So the first column should go 0, 1, 2. The uh, second column should go, yep, 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 0, 2, 4. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, brilliant. So that is using um, pointers to structs, using malloc, using free, and um, Yep, using pointers in inside functions, using double functions, using the arrow operator. I feel like we've covered a lot. And next tutorial, I'll show you what we're going to be doing. We're going to be increasing our WIMP knowledge and um, making this, we're going to be making an empty window and then the tutorials to follow will be filling it with things. Um, that's all from me for today. Um, see you later.